the criteria really for pelvic pain is uh, that a, a patient, and, and we're talking about male pelvic pain here, that they're getting pain in that abdominal or pelvic area. Mm -hmm. And the common areas are the, is perineal pain. So that's pain in that kind of soft area underneath between the scrotum and rectum. So they're getting maybe perineal pain. They may be getting some scrotal penal pain. They may be getting pain in that pubic, pubic lower abdominal area. So Under the, what circumstances? All the time or only on sexual activity? Or so it ten, a it, it, it's, it's supposed to be like uh, other patients that people see. There tends to be a spectrum. However, it tends to be, lots of patients tend to be quite constant. Some may be activity based. People don't like sitting. Mm -hmm. Cycling is a big irritant. Uh, but in addition to that pain, what, what moves them into the pelvic pain kind of diagnosis is that they're also getting uh, a combination of maybe urinary symptoms and common is frequency, urgency. They may be getting some mild bowel symptoms. So that's... Again, frequency and urgency? For, or a common one is um, incomplete emptying. So someone feels they're doing a bowel movement, but it's just not, just not easy to finish that bowel movement. Yep. Constipation, pain or discomfort in bowel movements. And then some sexual health symptoms, which tends to be the ejaculatory pain. Right. What's the physiological process behind all that? So what you tend to what you tend to get is you tend to get a big pelvic floor component, mm -hmm. and what what that a lot of men don't really have any insight that there is a pelvic floor in there. I think people generally mm -hmm. know a little bit about. The female pelvic floor, and this is the public really, rather than than a mm. professionals listening. So, uh, so most men are not aware that there is a pelvic floor in there, and that pelvic floor has a role in bowel function, in that a loop of it, that that puborectalis wraps in around the rectum to form that external anal sphincter. So, if that becomes overactive, sensitized, it will create pain there, and it will also affect bowel function right. and we know at the front the urethra that kind of small um, kind of tube from the bladder passes through the front of the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor wraps around that urethra forms that outer external urethral sphincter and similarly in men that doesn't have too much to do because we've got our prostate sitting above it we've got some smooth muscle fibers within that prostate but if that pelvic floor at the front becomes a bit overactive it can cause too much uh, pressure on that urethra where you start to get some urinary symptoms. And then finally, what, what, which I think men definitely aren't aware of, is the pelvic floor attaches into the base of that penis. So we've got a big bulbo muscle on each side. We've got an ischio muscle, the bulbo and ischio cavernosus. So those muscles attach into the base of the penis and they work really hard to maintain that erection to kind of keep that tumescence, keep it kind of nice and firm. They anchor it and they work quite strongly during ejaculation. So if those muscles are overactive, working too much, sensitive, that can cause that ejaculatory pain. And, and I think finally, it's a, bit, it's a bit like if we have, you know, if, if people who are listening are seeing maybe uh, lots of office workers who maybe get lots of um, spasm over activity in their upper traps or neck muscles, those muscles will become a little bit, uh, you know, starved of blood, a little bit hypoxic, acidic, cause pain, and they may cause maybe local or referred pain. And the same with the pelvic floor, that's a muscular structure, so that can cause either local pain in that perineum, rectum, or referred mm -hmm. pain.